Hello, I'm Jesse McAnally. And I am Andrew DeWolf. And welcome to Musicals with Cheese, a podcast where I try to get Andrew to like musical theater. And Andrew, we have an extra super special guest. Ooh, a super special guest. That's even more special than they usually are, I think. Yeah, extra super special. They add legitimacy to us. Um, oh, we, legitimacy. We need that. It, yeah, yeah. We're the most <laughs> legitimate podcast in the world. Andrew, please join me in welcoming the co-founder of Broadway at Work, former longtime editor-in-chief of Playbill.com, and the host and reporter of the Burnt, the show on Broadway Podcast Network that is about the show that set Broadway ablaze. It is uh, Blake Ross. Yeah! <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> you did it, Blake! Okay, we're having some mic issues now. Oh my goodness, Blake. It's a ghost of Rebecca haunting my microphone. <laughs> oh ghost my god, ah, micro- she tied it in. She tied what? it in. <laughs> Keep it in, Bree. You got, got to add some ooky spooky noises underneath it, too. <laughs> Rebecca! <laughs> you know what? That's a great cue. This week, we are talking about Rebecca Das Musical. Cue the music, Bree. Rebecca Das Musical is a musical with music by Sylvester LeVay and lyrics by Michael Coons and a book by Michael Coons. It is based on Rebecca by Daphne de, Daphne de Maurier, um, which you might also know as the one that wrote the Book of the Birds, um, another Hitchcock favorite. It premiered on September 28, 2006 at the Raymond Theater in Vienna, Austria, where it ran for three years. Subsequent productions have been mounted in Finland, Korea, Japan, and elsewhere, but notably not on Broadway. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, The plot, which adheres closely to the original novel, revolves around a wealthy Maximum de Winter, his naive new wife named I, and Mrs. Danvers, the manipulative housekeeper of de Winter's Cornish estate, Manderley. Miss Danvers resents the new wife's intrusion and persuades the new wife that she is unworthy uh, to be the replacement of Rebecca, the former wife that tragically died. A lot of shit goes down, and it's it's a <laughs> it's mess. It's a wild one. It is a wild <laughs> one. So, we're having you on, Blake, because right now you have a very long, in-depth podcast story called Burnt about the entire history of Rebecca, including its tumultuous, like, attempt to get on Broadway, which failed horribly. <laughs> yes. Well, we mean- yeah, I, know. I was going to say, the best part about it is that really the musical, which is so over the top and dramatic and airs on ridiculous, but we'll get into it, is the very least of the entire story. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't really want to get into that because we don't want to be replacement value for Burnt. Burnt is its own thing. But if you could give me the like less than one minute description of the the legal issues for Andrew and the audience, like as short as you can, let's do it. So very basically, it centers around this man named Ben Sprecher. He is this sort of big wig in the 80s and 90s off Broadway scene. And he becomes a man obsessed with a musical, Rebecca. And he just takes any measures that he possibly could to get it to Broadway, including falling into business with this absolute crook, Minnie Madoff style guy. There's a fake death. There's sabotage by one of his own employees. There's multiple perp walks involved. There's jail time. There's my own finding people in jail and getting the jail, you know, you have a call from, which was very exciting for me because (laughs) I love true crime. Um, And it all ends up where everybody gets burnt. Nobody gets unscathed in this entire story of trying. And it's 
What makes it so great is it the fact that it's all about bringing a musical to Broadway, which is like silly and ridiculous and like, you know, fun and kid. it's Broadway musical. But somehow it became like this true crime ridiculous roundabout story that is a great ad for burnt and andrew did it, <laughs> it's a kind of frame for you like after that musical ended that a bunch of americans tried to take it and then messed it up so bad that no one will ever bring this to america <laughs> they messed again. it up so bad that there's people in jail from it i i mean how do you even do that <laughs> multiple people in jail for it andrew multiple, multiple. people in jail because of this show. Okay. Broadway, I'm, impre- so. I'm impressed. That, yeah. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> and you got you know, people think the life of a Broadway person is so Pollyanna. That's all singing your feelings. But sometimes it's about going to jail. And that's yeah. the part I love. Every I'm, good Broadway story ends in a court case. We all know yes, this. Yes, of course. <laughs> he has said that in many, many episodes. And that has made me believe that Rebecca, that story, not Rebecca the musical, needs to be a Broadway musical. <laughs> well, I'm going to be the one who writes it. Because damn if I didn't spend a lot of time I've, enmeshed in these characters. It's, mm-hmm. it's a lot of twists and turns and a lot of really weird characters that you couldn't make up. You couldn't make up. But I hope people will listen to it. It is a good ride. Whether or not you're a musical person or if you're like an Andrew who's just dipping their toe in the Broadway pond. If you like, you know, creeps, you might like Bert. I will say I listened to all episodes. It was a wild ride. I loved it. Your narration (laughs) throughout it was incredible. I really highly recommend it. But you know what, Blake? You spent all this time dedicated to Rebecca. You must really love this show a lot. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> it's a show that I've watched. Um, I should say that we watched, that all three of us watched a bootlegged version from the German musical version, Rebecca Das Musical. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's, it is always hard, but, you know, this is your job. It's not my job. But it is always hard to sort of uh, judge a musical watching a bootleg. But mm. it's an interesting, it's an interesting musical. I will. I, I understand that. But also we're strange. I, I can't imagine an anti bootleg thing, especially when you're across the world. And this was 10 years ago. I, I don't no, know how we could no, no, ever no. watch this show. <laughs> there would have been no, I agree. There would have been no other way. And frankly, I don't know if I would have wanted to watch it another way. Like it just so campy and ridiculous that I don't know that I would want to have watched it another way than sitting in my house with a sleeve of Oreos, <laughs> my head in my hand, and just saying, oh, what the fuck is this shit? I, I, I did not expect to walk into this podcast on the, the Rebecca defense train, um, but I kind of I mean, liked it. How strongly can you defend it, though? It's I'm, not... I mean, it does Andrew Lloyd Webber better than Andrew Lloyd Webber has for the last 10 years. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y- y'all Ooh, y'all in is, podcast land cannot... That is a cannot... spicy take right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, yeah. The, compared to School of Rock, yeah. This is why I said before we started recording why I often agree with Andrew. <laughs> I don't blame anyone who often agrees with Andrew. The reason why I have him on this show is because I love his opinion so much. I'm interested now, Andrew, will you do me the honor of describing me the plot of Rebecca? <laughs> Please. Oh, Lord. It, it's kind of pretty simple, but it's all like wrapped up in itself in, in like weird twists and, and mysteries. But when you get down to it, not that much actually happens. Yeah, um, that's that's the biggest issue with this show is it kind of meanders. Yeah, so... There is um, the main character who uh, I'm not forgetting their name. They don't have a name. Their name um, is I. Their name is I. Or ich. 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 I didn't do bring that over because that would just make Ben Brantley's time much easier. <laughs> ich is right. <laughs> Beautiful wife. Ich. <laughs> and, and Ich is... Um, an employee for this mean woman who doesn't stick around very long. And, and they're staying at a hotel in France. I believe it's France. Um, Monte Carlo. Yeah. And yeah. Um, there's this rich gentleman who has recently uh, lost his wife, who is Rebecca. Um, and he is also at the hotel. And for really no real reason other than I guess he thinks she's pretty, he invites true her to the mountains. Love. Yeah, it's, it's true love. Um, it, it love at first sight and then immediately asks her to marry him. And of course she says yes, because um, 
she loves him, I guess, a lot, you know, after like one hour. Um, <laughs> then they move back to his house where um, she is just constantly treated horribly by him, by the one of the lead servants there who is like worships Rebecca. Mrs. And, like, Danvers. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Danvers, who like literally is she's like the voice of Rebecca in the show in a way. She is just overly creepy and weird and treats uh, the lead like garbage the entire show. And, and then also as, the best part of the show. <laughs> she is also the best part of the show, sadly. Um, <laughs> and then after, you know, assaulting uh, her several times, eventually um, her, her husband um, finally admits that he he murdered Rebecca um, because she smiled at him too meanly. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> it, I mean, Rebecca, admittedly, Rebecca was like cheating on him and a bunch of stuff. Although I don't know if you can really say murder was justified there uh, Wait, at all. You need, you forgot to say who she was cheating on. Oh, I mean, with. yeah, of course. It, it's, it's her cousin. Now, this is a man that knows how to marry his cousin. She likes to fuck her cousin. Uh, she loves <laughs> Rudy, she's just like Rudy Giuliani. We can't blame her. And then she also when she after she died, the cousin keeps coming to the house to steal money uh, because he is just a, a fine gentleman uh, who and she obviously had very good taste. Um, so then she gets murdered um, by uh, the Max. husband, Maxim, Maxim, who I, I think I haven't said his name yet. Maxim, who is the husband. Uh, and the entire second half is about Maxim getting away with murder and the lead helping him do so. Uh, and then the house burns down and everyone everyone lives happily ever after. The, the house <laughs> burning down is really fucking cool, though. <laughs> it, it does look very... Like, the it visuals in the show are better than the show Anything I've seen on Broadway. <laughs> like, literally, that's... I brought this up before this... in a lot of our um, other European shows. They do it visuals better than we ever have. <laughs> I was gonna say, isn't this... We've seen another German show, which was... Uh, Hunchback? Yeah, the Hunchback Which also Austrian looks really good. Looks better also than look anything. Yeah. Well, you guys. Okay. I know I'm talking to a bunch of dudes here. You know, they set the stage on fire. So, like, whoop, it's fire, sweet. Fire, which is <laughs> very sweet and great. And that's what made it very expensive. However, yes. I should say, it was a $14 million musical, which in those days was kind of like, a, you know, this was 10 years ago which was kind of, you know, a lot of money, which nowadays is kind of standard, but it was a lot of money. But that show in Germany was so cheap looking, except for the fact that they set the stage on fire at the end. That was the cool part. They set the stage on fire. It was pretty cool. But that then staircase that's in general. Their money. Looks, uh, that there was stair- like one prop and like everything else was a scrim, but it was like one prop, the entire musical. Sorry, I just wasn't. Yeah. How much more money do you think on fire? I got they would have had to spend to give the lead a, a, a name? <laughs> How much does the name go for nowadays? <laughs> Our main character. Uh, oh, mm. <laughs> don't have the budget for that one. <laughs> um, it's priceless. Jo- jokes aside, um, I know you've got a deep, deep history with this, Blake. I know you you're going to have a lot of thoughts here. So you don't like this show. You, you don't like what it says. You don't like a lot of it, I imagine. No, well, I'll, let me say this. Michael Kunza and Sylvester LeVay, who wrote the musical, are are the Andrew Lloyd Webbers of their town in Europe. Mm-hmm. They wrote very successful musicals. Rebecca is one of them. I mean, it's one of the most um, toured show in Asia. It played forever in Germany. I mean, it was a hit. Michael Kunza also brought Dance of the Vampires here, mm-hmm. which was a humongous mess. Yeah. And I couldn't imagine sitting in that theater as Ben Sprecher, the lead producer, did and watched it and become so enamored with it. It's basically a rip off of rip off of Phantom. I mean, everything about it. They have a Mrs. Van Hopper, who's basically Carlotta. Right. She's the funny sort of overweight, fancy, mm. rich woman. Who only is there for like two minutes, though. She's there, right? So she's the Carlotta. <laughs> then they have the brother and the sister who are sort of funny. That's like the two opera owners. They have a masquerade ball. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that. Ball. <laughs> That's Phantom. They have I... the 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 um the little trinket that was Rebecca's. Remember, like, the 
the, she has a little trinket at her desk that was Rebecca's. And don't touch it. Rebecca's <laughs> trinket. Break it. That's they like break the it music twice. box. It's random. <laughs> it's the music box. I mean, so it's it is. So, I can't imagine watching it and thinking other than this is a poor man's phantom of the opera. And again, the music is. I agree with you, Andrew. The music is quite beautiful. It's great, mm-hmm. but just the, the production itself, I couldn't imagine saying to myself at that mo- point in time, after having a production of Phantom of the Opera running for 20 years, uh, making billions of dollars and thinking, you know what I think? I think this show, which uh, has, <laughs> it speaks so poorly of women that she doesn't even have a name. She's called like a little fool. She's a, it's so like caught in its time. I think that should be the show that I obsess about so much that I lose everything over. I'm going to counter you um, with respect. I agree with everything you're saying with <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, I was going to say this is a Jekyll wild one. That is the is poor man's phantom done in America. <laughs> and that, it made yes. a lot of money. Agree. Well, that's a, a fine. But that also had David Hasselhoff. It had like, remember they brought in the can't guy. Can't replace from, Hasselhoff. You can't <laughs> Hasselhoff. But one thing, I mean, it didn't start with it, David own, Hasselhoff. It just had that, Robert Cuccioli and all that at first. But that, yes, I agree. And it I wasn't good used, until Hasselhoff touched it. Though. That You're right. Was, that music, that musical, did a great job of of making a shit ton of money. Yes. <laughs> Which is why I can understand, all right, that was fan- Diet Phantom. If we do our own version of Diet Phantom with a little more oomph Sure, to it. Euro, it's- Euro Poppy, Euro Poppy. And, the, and the, the, <laughs> the story can be interesting if you like, you know, gothic tales of ghosts and stuff like that. So I'm not, and the, I mean, I am a fan of the Hitchcock film yeah. um because how could you not be it's hitchcock but to me it just was a little cheesy as we're talking to musicals with cheese. So to me yes. it had a, a bit of a gale lead on it <laughs> and that's i agree with that but also this has about 20 more songs than phantom does so, i mean phantom's got five songs well, and then they repeat like 20 times well, 20 more say, songs that all sound the same does it really the rebecca song that miss mander <laughs> that miss man uh, miss manderlay miss stanvers sings this song rebecca which is yes a, an earworm of a song oh yes i'm into it but man do that do they have like 12 yeah. reprises of that song she sings no other song except that of, oh bra, bra, bra. <laughs> and it gets into your soul. It gets into your soul. It's like the but only one lot. you can remember at the end of it, too. You're right. You're, you are Is completely right. Is that the name right. of your musical? Because I didn't realize that that was the name of your musical. It was Rebecca. 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 But rem- I'm thinking of like the tour. So it's like come into it. I can see it coming to Broadway. Come like I'm gonna go see this. And they're like, oh, do you remember any of the songs? I was one that was like Rebecca. <laughs> like a Midwest mom that's like, I remember that. I remember it. <laughs> well, oh. I, but I do have to say that version. So, so what happens? What was supposed to happen was Christopher Hampton, mm-hmm. who wrote um, the 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 less dangerous the. What's that? Le, de, de, le, 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 yeah. Yes. And he um, recently wrote The Father, won an Oscar for it. Like he he's humongous. He was supposed to come and doctor the whole thing with Michael mm-hmm. Kunza. So they were it was it was to transition from this very European Euro poppy type musical into um something that was perhaps more palatable for the Broadway stage. Um, so again, we were watching the German Das musical version, which yeah. is different. Um, it is different. And I even just the casting choices, like Sierra Bogus is a great comic actress. I hope they would have leaned more into that. Given her more of a look to the audience, like, can you imagine that? Can you believe this situation I'm in? Because it is a wacky situation. And if you made I or Ick a little more aware of what a crazy situation she's in. It would kind of add to her character rather than... She's like so naive through the entire thing. It's like painful. (laughs) And she has a beautiful, beautiful voice. The the singers in this are amazing. So if anybody has the, the wherewithal or the want to go and get the actual album... I would um, suggest that because it is, or you could find some of the songs on YouTube because they yes. belt the hell out of 
the score. Um, beautiful voices. And I would have loved to have heard Sierra Bagas on some of these songs. Agree. But yes, she does come in as a little church mouse, E, Ich, whatever her name is. She comes in as a church mouse and is in a church mouse the entire time. She's literally a, quote, paid companion. That is her job <laughs> to an old lady, which I guess in the 40s was like a thing where you paid young ladies like, to what, come. 90 pounds a year or something? Is right. what they exactly. To make 90 pounds a year and beer and accompany you places so there was lots of dated material here yeah. but yes that was her that was her job and then she comes in and, and like andrew said she falls in love immediately um for no reason at all with the <laughs> her, star max their first date is like he, they go to a mountain and he has like an anxiety attack and then <laughs> they go home <laughs> man i've had i've had worse first dates you know i was gonna say i i didn't get married till i was 37 kids so i had a lot of bad first dates with bad anxiety attacks in them but that's a whole other podcast what do you mean did you, did you get therapist. married the next day on those dates though i did not get married the next day i did not i waited a whole week andrew <laughs> I waited i'm a, a modern week. lady <laughs> <laughs> my husband remembered my husband actually gave me a name <laughs> and it wasn't just his last name exactly. <laughs> this, this is mrs this is Olympus. i mean it was i it was a highly entertaining way to watch a musical i do have to say so thank you for giving me the opportunity because honestly when i was researching this i didn't watch the whole musical oh I had, kind of, I had seen parts of it i saw commercials for it i had seen clips of it on youtube but saw I the banner in Times Square. It, I I know the whole story around it, but I hadn't watched the entire musical because I didn't really want to. I didn't really want to have any feelings about it either way. Mm -hmm. um, in investigating it, I kind of just wanted to tell the story, and it really wasn't about the musical so much, as much about the crazy shit that happened bringing the musical to to Broadway or trying to at least. Um, so this gave me a chance to watch it and. Gosh, oh, it was a lot of musical. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of musical with a lot of weird dated gender politics. Why is this one of the most performed shows in Europe and across the world? What what drives people to see it that aren't Americans? It's the Jekyll and Hyde effect, I think. Didn't that get really popular too? Yeah, it's the Frank Wildhorn effect. He's big in Korea. Just like you just give him a bunch of ballads and then people are like, all right, this is what musicals are. Lots of singing, <laughs> a lot of ballads. I honestly... That's what I, I mean, it just goes back to what I was saying. I can't imagine sitting in that theater and thinking this would be palatable for for New York audiences or for Broadway audiences. It just um, I think also the fact that it was so phantom adjacent to me was like, oof. and I also I probably again, which is the reason why I didn't watch it earlier. I had so Ben Sprecher, this was supposed to be his Phantom of the Opera. Mm -hmm. The this that was his goal. Andrew Lloyd Webber came to the readings because he and Sierra Bogus had been working together. So this was all about I mean, Andrew Lloyd Webber was mentioned in this man's pitch deck more than the woman that was starring. Ugh, I more than her, Andrew Lloyd Webber was in his pitch deck documents to investors. So he was so obsessed with. Andrew Lloyd Webber and Phantom and having that be his big ticket um, that, but I just I can't imagine watching it and thinking this is better than the Phantom of the Opera. I'll bring this. I don't think he wanted better. He just wanted money. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is close. People will see this also. Maybe the masquerade. <laughs> so there was the masquerade and her coming down the stairs, which is literally like one of the most iconic musical yep. moments. When she came down the stairs, I was like, my goodness. This mm -hmm. is too much. Okay. Yes. Top five Broadway are musical theater staircases. Number one. <laughs> Rebecca. Rebecca. With the best musical staircase. Um, I'd say number two, um, Dolly, when she comes down the stairs. And right, exactly. Dolly. That's a good one. Yes. Um, three, Masquerade. Um, four, I'm pretty sure Quasimodo had to walk down a stairway in the oh. La Jolla Playhouse version. I like Punch when they Back. have like the rolling staircases and they push them around on them. And yeah, that was going to be my fifth one. Yes. You're in town where they're pushing around the staircases you're in, you're in town. town. That's your top five <laughs> theater staircases. Hamilton has good staircases in it. That they pass, that they yeah, you're right. Move you're around, right. Mm. but you know what? That, that's but a it's not a grand staircase. We I, I don't think you know, Hamilton needs that, more awards. No, it doesn't need more. <laughs> forget about Hamilton. But I will. But more I did think, like, wow, this the grandeur of this 
palatial mansion was like, I mean, like Beauty and the Beast. If you remember some of the sets, and I, again, we're not watching the Broadway version. I would have actually loved to have seen what they did on Broadway and mm-hmm. how they brought it here. Because Phantom of the Opera was made for $8 million in 1988. That would have been like $20 million. It's one of the most opulent musicals ever to have graced the Broadway stage. I mean, like you can, Mm. everywhere you go was the flickering lights and the smoke and just drapery and gold and it's gothic. This was like, again, it had a staircase. Sure. (laughs) It was a really cool staircase. I mean, there was an (laughs) other staircase with the boathouse. That was pretty cool too. Yeah, there's a lot of staircases. There was a lot of stairs. There was a lot of stairs. They had the elevator, the little elevator for the hotel. That was pretty, then they could close the doors. <laughs> really fancy you stuff. Even know, I mean, is, she, is this what we're bringing? Is this what we're reducing musicals to now? Like their their transportation. Remember when the house vehicles? burned down? <laughs> Remember when they burned it down? To another, give oh. it a Tony. It's a lot. This is a weird thing to appreciate. I usually hate projections, but I like the way they use projections in this this musical. Um, it wasn't just like, here's the background like they did in the Les Mis revival. And it's just like that. That's our background. It's like in between cutting off or a continuation of the set. I thought that was a cool use of projections. But I agree with you. And again, this was 10 years ago, right? So yeah. this was a long time ago. It probably if it would have been in t- today's iteration, probably would have been a little bit cooler with all the with the spectacle of that. So I agree yeah. with you on that. Oh, I did write one other thing where I was like, are they serious? <laughs> There's literally a song that she sings about being the woman in white. Oh, which is no. an Andrew Lloyd right. Webber musical. You're right. There's just oh, a no. lot of, yeah. <laughs> I, I will say, I prefer Miss no Dampers to Madame Giri. I, I really never, wanted there to be a ghost the whole first half, and they never did that's it. Too, that's too close to Phantom of the Opera. Can't, can't make it be a real There's ghost. There's no ghost in Phantom of the Opera. Like, he's we could have had a real... He's, he's a fake ghost, about. though. I want a real ghost. I, w- I wanted Rebecca to come back and, like, you want, actually... You like, want Casper to come back and be like, ha-ha, and still I wanted them to be the reveal that, like, like, <gasps> like uh, Miss, Miss Danvers or whatever was actually communicating with the dead. Rebecca was still in the house, literally. Your pitch is you know? better than the musical. Angel. And then and then the actual reveal is just like the guy's a dick and gets away with murder. <laughs> a man murders his wife and gets away with it. The musical. <laughs> oh, no. We just watched Annette, which is what we're covering next week, and it has the same plot. There's well, a lot he... of misogyny here. Kiddo. Yeah. She kills him. I would like that, actually. I just... No, that would probably still be misogynistic because they just do. But that would have been a good end. I mean, da- me, da- me telling Daphne du Maurier what to do. But like <laughs> if she, if he actually was this like horrible, you know, remember that Jennifer Lopez movie where like the husband ends up being like a total creeper and he's like goes after her and then she kills him at the end. Just remember saying, if anybody wants Gone to produce Girl? that musical. Yeah, exactly. If anybody wants what if, what to produce Gone, actually... Gone Girl, the musical, <laughs> call me. I'd be into it. What if what if she just goes and she kills him? She kills the cousin. She kills Miss Danvers. She just murders everybody in Act Two. Like everyone dies. A ghost does murders. I'd be into it. No, 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 no. The main character oh. does. Oh, Ick. I... Yeah. <laughs> we also we would maybe give her a name. <laughs> maybe <I> like, <laughs> we're not even sure about that in our revision. You what, know does, it'd I be do, like Kill like, Bill, I, right? Does Kill Bill? She doesn't have a name in Kill Bill, right? It's the bride. But what yeah. were we saying, Blake? No, I was going to say the, sh- the, the ship sinking song. <laughs> yeah. You know, like when they're in the ocean and the ship is sinking and they're like, the ship is sinking. I like that song. <laughs> I liked that scene. I, I, we'll go into the songs a I'm little bit later. I'm just saying things I like still... because I hate to be a hater. I it's didn't want to come on musicals. That's what we do I here. I didn't want my time on musicals with cheese. <laughs> To be drinking the hater just full of spewing the haterade. Um, <laughs> Say this like this is your only time coming here. I didn't. I didn't want that for myself. But listen, life takes you places, man. This is going to be a bunch of angry Europeans. <laughs> exactly. on this How dare you talk about Rebecca that way? <laughs> that is a national treasure. Oh, well, now they're really going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> We cut our European audience just in half right there. Well, I mean, speaking of what audiences think, I mean, I think yes. we have to. It's time to compare our opinions to those of the theater critics when this came out. It's time for Brie Views. Without Brie, we miss you, Brie. Please come back. We're, we're a mess without you sometimes. It's time for Brie Views. 
It's time for previews. So Variety took a look at the original 2006 Vienna production and they wrote a glowing review, like an absolutely glowing review, which is interesting mostly because like I don't quite know how Variety is in other places that aren't America, but I I just don't imagine them loving this as much as they did. Like when it it rang wrong to my ears. I'm not a journalist or anything, but it feels like "Uh, Variety, really? Do you know who wrote it? It just was it was credited to the Variety staff. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Collective I effort. I, I have no That's idea because I tried review, to look for it. Okay. Huh. Um, and it just is basically like <laughs> um, Kunz's deft lyrics take us on a deep into the psyches of the never named heroine, simply called I, Moody, Mercurial, Maxim de Winter, obsessive Miss Danvers, and even the late Rebecca herself. LeVay knows how to write tunes that jam in your head. He delivers the goods with Miss Danvers haunting Rebecca. And the anthem, the power of a woman in love. Um, yeah, that's that's basically the tone of the rest of it. But let me see if I can get into the performances a bit. Ewa Kroger has a, built a substantial career on his pretty boy looks. His singing while in passion is merely adequate, but he rises to the challenge <laughs> of confessing his hatred for Rebecca and no smile was ever as cold. Mrs. Danvers gets the best music. And in Susan, Rigvava Dumas has found a perfect interpreter. With a rich mezzo-soprano as her weapon, she embodies evil born of passion and jealousy in a multi-layered turn. <laughs> <laughs> they were into the show. They, they really were, which I don't know why it surprised me so much, um, but it was like, wow, glowing except for Ewa Kroger? <laughs> Poor Ela. But listen... Michael Kunza and Sylvester Alette of LeVay are A-OK. Those guys make a shit ton of money. Yes, So who do. gives a crap if they come to Broadway? <laughs> I'm, I, I did not enjoy Dance of Vampires, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Ooh, when do I get who to see Who cares? That? You're famous. And, it's, it's, it, it all comes back to David Hasselhoff. You're going to be does. David Hasselhoff and be a Euro star and make all your money in Euros. Why not? Euros are almost real money. It's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather make in euros than making the U.S. dollar at this point. Huh. I, I, you make great points, both of you. Um, I, <laughs> currency I, burn. <laughs> I like how you guys just made horrendous statements. I'm like, great points, everybody. <laughs> really good points all around. Um, but I don't. You <laughs> you've worked for Playbill. You've probably had to write a lot of critiques of things. Like, how, what do you go into when you see a show? And you have to report on it. Well, Playbill famously does not do right tapes because Playbill is the Switzerland of <laughs> of the Broadway. You, so you're no you Ben Brantley. I'm no Ben. I'm certainly no Ben Brantley. But I do have the thing I love so much about the theater is going to the theater, either loving it. Sometimes when you hate watch it, it's even better than when you mm-hmm. than when you love watch it. There's a, I mean, I do remember watching that revival of um, Jekyll and Hyde with Constantine and Deborah. What's her name? Deborah, Deborah Cox. Cox. Yeah. And that was a hate watch for the days. I mean, she sang the shit out of that show. She is a voice like no other. But that was a great, funny hate watch. That'll be our next musical with Cheese because that was a lot of show. Oh, my God. I, I saw that when it did its pre-Broadway tour. And my God, Constantine Maroulis. He was not ready for that tour, and apparently he's a he's a real bad guy in real life. So like all oh those. My, I didn't know that, but he was super dramatic. He my like, goodness, he like threw his pregnant wife down a set of stairs. Oh my! What? Was it? Wait, what? Yeah, on and then, purpose. No one does it on accident. Um, but yeah, that was a unless rough. you're Max De Winters. Yes, oh. Max De Winters. Um, Is this proven? That was something that there is still like litigation over. Um, That might be an allegedly, but maybe you're, I don't know what I I remember. It was something that that came out after all that. That was one of my favorite nights in the theater. Just watching that, watching Deborah Cox sing her ass off, but watching that production, which was full of cheats. And it was about a half hour too long too. Like every version of Jackal and Hyde. Um, I will say anytime I see Rent, I don't even watch the show anymore. I watch the audience and see how long they make it. I I know. Yes. Are you going to go on an anti-Rent tirade? First you bring down Constantine Maroulis and now you take on Rent? This is the hell you're dying on? I gotta be on his side this this time. (laughs) Rent is a... No. Guys, the last three have... times I've seen Rent live, um, everyone in my area has left before or at intermission. See, that's where I think the 
generational thing that I was talking about before we came on may Mm -hmm. play into it because I am the gender. I believe I'm the generation before you guys and rent was our, you know, Mm -hmm. rent was everything to us. So even like rent on Fox, which was like ridiculous, that live rent. But even that, I mean, it's rent. I think that was an improvement. (laughs) I can't believe you hate rent. Really? Rent? Rent is unfinished work. It could have been great. That's how I see it. I'm excited yeah. for Tick, Tick, Boom. I'm, I got, I'm hopeful that that will be a great movie. They did it. That City Center version was wonderful. And if my money's on any, but anything, it's Slim and one Miranda. I mean, I think that's a safe bet at this point. I was going to say, you know. <laughs> but yeah, we're kind of famous for our hate of Rent. Um, we were a little too harsh on it because it was like our second episode. Um, we've since come back and had an actual critique of it. So wait, did you guys get so much hate? We didn't get as much as you would think, but we did get a good amount. We got a lot of people like, yeah, I agree with you. And then the the millennials would come in like, you had to be there at the time. You, you idiot. You just right. don't yes. get it. You don't get us. Okay. Once just, I don't know. Glory. <laughs> Doesn't it doesn't feel edgy enough to me? Like I feel like we've gotten so much further than this culturally that it just feels like a stale critique of an old culture. <laughs> On that note, how about exactly. we sell out to you know the, the the capitalism and we go into a mid-show announcement? Enjoy these <laughs> ads, you guys. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt you in the middle of the show, but we've got a shoo 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 at you. Ooh, now he can speak. Yeah, today's <laughs> show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon. Andrew, tell us about Patreon. What have we got there? Oh boy, Patreon, we got all sorts of stuff. We got extra content. We got uh, full full length like commentary tracks that go over like certain movies, and and we have episodes about tv shows that are coming out I, we got all sorts of stuff over there you can also get the uh, video uh, of us right now if you yes. if you have a picture. you can see blake's beautiful Me. face right now <laughs> oh my god she's doing cartwheel oh she's on the ceiling how to get oh down my. you can't prove that she's, she's not naked? doing this what? What? <laughs> blake get get your clothes back on um, you know what she Is may this be naked like an ad for your only fans <laughs> Not we call anymore. it only cheese here, though. Only <laughs> cheese. You guys have a big uh, old mom crowd. That's my kind of my kind of only fans. Sign me up oh, for yeah. that. I can see just on the tip of your lips, though, Blake. I can see you just want to say jo- join their Patreon. You want to tell people to s- that you need to join our Patreon. I can see you want to say it. Join their Patreon, you guys. I gotta because... say it. I gotta do it. <laughs> How could you look at these two fellas? The gorgeousness. How could well, you not the, want the to be non patrons? Exactly. How could you not want to be seeing <laughs> this on, on video for yourself? In fact, all three of us are naked now. It has become <laughs> OnlyFans. <laughs> Join our OnlyFans. <laughs> Join our OnlyFans. <laughs> Just who are who are our current fans? Our current OnlyFans <laughs> participants are Melissa Goldman, Terry Needleman. That's your mother. <laughs> John Donna, Blake <laughs> Nichols, Danielle Rennix, Justice Stampede, Ewan Cassidy, Taskier, Fire September, Monica Thoreau, Mina Maniri, Brent Black, Haley Murray, Nathaniel Stacey Coombe, Joseph Evans Green, Carrie Ahern, Mary Lou Show, Ked John Finals, Heck You, I Go by Elijah Now, Russ Walker, Musical Hell, Emily Gracie, Tubbo Lamb, Kyle Summers, Jen AC, Scoot, and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, Felice A, Liz Lynn, Allison Stuller, Nothing is Certain Except Beth and Taxes. John Vanels, Thesbian, Ren Cullen, Wait in the Wings, Jacob Stroop, Rafael Martinez Salas, Robert Benjamin, Rachel T, Jessica T, Genevieve Hartnett, Cass, Mitchell Young, Chai Teacup, Katie McDonough, Timothy Keys, T- Jeffrey Machado, Jacques, Toon Vanessen, R. Elliot, Chris Marcote, Katie Cherberg, Mimu, Kiji Marie Anastasio, Layla, RJ Norija, Sebastian Canino, Cinemageddon Reviews, Avon Regan, Super Antelope, Super Antelope, Lizzie <laughs> Keynes, and Charlie B. We had some new ones I had Charlie to learn. Brown, baby. Um, <laughs> that's the money! <laughs> <laughs> they give us a little financial support that helps us keep the lights on here at Musicals with Cheese. If you'd like to join them in supporting us and get all those fun perks that Andrew listed and some more, come join us over there. How are we ready to get back to the show? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
I Dreamt of Manderley, the opening number, which is also the very famous opening lines of the book. Yes. Um, effective. It's effective in the same way that the opening to Phantom is effective. It made me think there was going to be a ghost. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Again with this, the ghost. This, it, I mean, there's like the shadowy figures in the background and then one of them walks up to her. I thought it was, I thought there was going to be a ghost. <laughs> It's, I think it's good, though. I mean, the song is pretty effective, and it's one of the like, better dramatic songs early on in the show, because then we cut into these like goofy songs with Mrs. Van Hopper and all that. But <laughs> it, Yes. Hmm. I liked it. I liked that opening. So it was a nice opening of musical. Yes, and it's iconic yes. in the same way that it represents the uh, iconography of the book and the movies, and it takes the one thing that basically everyone knows about Rebecca, which is those opening lines. It's like the call me Ishmael of um, from Moby Dick, mm-hmm. like takes all of this and makes them work um, there. It's really hard to translate prose into lyrics, um, which is why you got to appreciate the lyrics. Lyricists that are really able to do it, like the Dave Malloy's and the Paul Gordon of the world. Um, so I appreciate it on that level. It is it feels like it's writing me a check. It doesn't pay, you know, in what way? <laughs> like, yeah, it makes it seem like the story is much more epic than it really is when really yes. it's more of a gossipy kind of story. Well, again, I don't know if this is a generational thing or what, but Rebecca was not like the, you know, was certainly not no. like our Mo- a Moby Dick. It was, an, I, I think perhaps Ben Sprecher maybe over um, emphasized how much of a classic Rebecca was. Yes, yeah. sure. You know, like it was, but uh, that everybody would always know Rebecca and, oh, last night I dreamt I was at Manderley again and everybody knows, I mean, it was Al- Alfred Hitchcock's first movie, sure, but I think maybe there was perhaps a little bit of wishful thinking on how much this piece of literature meant to the American heart and soul. Am I wrong? I mean, I didn't read Rebecca when I was in school. I don't, I don't no. think my parents did and they, no. you know, my and they Nobody were probably the, t- the ticket, the ticket audience that they were going for, you know, like older women. And that's like primarily the people who buy tickets on Broadway. But like, I don't think that they were like, that's such a beloved novel. Am I wrong? Uh, no. no, but neither was Phantom. <laughs> Phantom was a pulp detective story that sure. wasn't No, I'm not good. saying your your source material necessarily needs to right. be like a, a thing, but this was like, you know, everybody knows Rebecca, the tale of Rebecca, and everyone's seen that movie and everybody's watched that, read that book, and I don't know that that's necessarily true. I mean, at, at, in Phantom, they don't do an opening number that is the opening You're right. Of the in book. fact, they basically <laughs> throw the book away with Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> they, they light it on fire and throw it in the garbage and then make their own thing. On the, no, they throw it onto <laughs> the staircase that's already on fire. And then, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> um... <laughs> I, it's not even. I agree with you completely. It's not even like Hitchcock's most famous adaptation of a, of a De Maurier book. Right. Yes, exactly, exactly. Do the Birds the musical or Bird Demic the musical? One of those two. We definitely need to get more birds on Broadway. We can't do Bird Demic right now. It's, it's too too political. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go on to the, another song. Oh gosh, there's so many songs in the, fir- the first act, and it's like it's, they kind of wash I, over you like in a sea of ballads. Um, are you happy? I do kind of want to talk about because it's both. Are you happy? Are you angry? Because that's another section that I know for a fact is translated right from the book. Bist du glücklich? Kannst du mich immer noch ertragen? Ich bin schwierig. Es lebt sich nicht sehr leicht mit mir. Das ist Unsinn. Schau, was dir meine Augen sagen. Du hast bestimmt oft Langeweile. Überhaupt nicht. Wahrscheinlich fehlt dir vieles hier. Ich habe doch alles, was ich brauche. I remember I or Ick was just like, are you happy? And he's like, I don't think, uh, what's happy? Who cares? <laughs> like, that's not what you want to hear from your husband. And I want to talk about how, at least in the Vienna production, they really softened up Max. I know that Andrew's like, he's basically abusive. He was so much worse in the books. He was so much worse in most movie adaptations. <laughs> how, even the movie, yeah. How bad can he get? 
Like he's like he like physically like puts his hands on her and like shakes her and like pushes her down. Like whenever she questions him on anything, it's a lot like, of gaslighting and distance it emotionally. I mean, he is a murderer, so I mean, I guess that to be expected. Maybe, maybe but most just... of the characters, I think, even like the Danvers character, while the woman who played her here has again a beautiful voice. And the fact that they give her this song to sing over and over and over again got a little tiring, but she does have a gorgeous voice. But like Danvers in that movie, Judith Anderson is like the creepiest of creepers, like really crazy, creepy. And she was, you know, she was, I just wish they would have gone like, if they're going to go overly over the top, which what this musical was, I wish they would have just gone there and made her like so creepy. They needed to take a lesson out of Stephen Sondheim's book and embrace the Fosca of it all. Like, don't yes. worry if she's likable or if you love having her on stage. You got to. Yes. That's a great, great comparison. Like Fosca, I mean, like you can't get over the creep and the mole and the creepiness of her. And Danvers, you know, like, she, again, she had a great ballad, but like, I wish that she was like more Judith Anderson where she was like in that movie. She's again, for all your wonderful Patreon watchers, like when she's like. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like, missing out so on great creepy. physical comedy. Great. Oh, I could they, watch they that just, for days. Didn't they just, they kind of like make her hair black and like with a white stripe or something like that. Yeah, and but she, Andrew, like, she lets it out when she gets a little unhinged a little bit. Oh, yeah. She could have been way creepier. Yes. Um, and also uh, in in that Hitchcock film, they really kind of leaned into her maybe having a romantic feeling for Rebecca. And it feels like they were trying very hard not to imply that as much here. They wanted to make sure you knew that Rebecca just loved her cousin. <laughs> yes, exactly. It was. <laughs> They wanted to it was, make really it wasn't gay. Into just just the one of the cousins. Of a cousin, the baby with the cousin, <laughs> sleeping with a cousin. That was the lean. The choice. It was an artistic choice. No, this is a man that knows how to marry his cousin. I mean, it's not that uncommon. Rudy Giuliani's married to his cousin and all that. I, is that a good example? I'm not. Say, good example. <laughs> is this like? A, is Rudy. that a positive? Yeah, good old. It's not, but once again, like Rebecca, Rudy. Rebecca really is the Rudy Giuliani of this story. You know, just I'm make everyone's that, life worse. That in the ads for Burns, <laughs> please it's, do. It's like Rudy Giuliani. If Rudy, Rudy Giuliani smiled at you real, fire. real nice, you would want to push him down the stairs. Oh yes! Oh god! <laughs> okay, I finally can. I, I understand Maxim's ability. If I'm just imagining Rebecca as Rudy Giuliani and he's just smiling at. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, you're dead. Wait, there's another song. Can I? Can we talk about one other song that course, I actually yeah. really enjoyed? But I wish it would have went a little further. It was like the Van Hopper American Woman song, which was obviously yes. funny for German people watching this, like you know, ha ha ha, silly American rich goofy woman. Dan, Zen, Z. I'm an American woman. Ich weiß, was ich will und will es gleich. I appreciated that song. They could have I, gone so far. Could have been like, remember in Aida when she's the closets open yes. and she's my strongest suit and she's dancing with the dresses. Like I feel like it could have been that kind of moment. Like how crazy American one lady, ha ha ha, <laughs> husband, hilarious. It, it could have been like the scene from Pacific Overtures where they do like the Uncle Sam cakewalk kind of style. Totally. Um, I love that song. I also have discovered a new like thing that I love to hear. It's Germans speaking German with an American accent. It just is something that's like <laughs> my brain cannot compute what I am hearing. I mean, you have to think about it. We we have all the like other accents that in our movies, like Russian accents and stuff like that. 
you know, I'm sure that they have the same thing for us. It's great. I mean, Russians I love it. watching, like yeah, like Russians have like American Russian. characters who are speaking Russian, but in an American yes. accent. <laughs> in Soviet Russia, that kind of crap. <laughs> um, well, I do love that doing scene our too. version of it. <laughs> um, that scene is w- a, a last well, like one, time when you that, need it. Yes, that was a, a nice little moment. And again, if we're gonna place, you have to that. The masquerade ball to me, really, I was the masquerade ball, the Andrew Lloyd Webber fake masquerade ball um, did me. I will say they they didn't have the audacity of putting it at the start of act two. But I will give them that much credit. They did not. Close. It was close. It, was we, close. It, it is a weird. OK, I talk about musical theater structure a lot in this show um, because I find it fascinating and how it's very different from film structure, which a lot of people have done analysis on. Mm hmm. But usually the one that the song that opens act two should really have nothing to do with the plot. Whereas like the what did I miss or it was a real nice clam bake. um, All those types where it's kind of like "Eh, everyone sit back down, relax. We're not going to start for a minute. Get get in your seat, get your get your soda pop open. No one cares about this song here. It's like plots back. All right, we're back into it, guys. No, no, no breathing time. (laughs) Sit your ass down. Rebecca's at it. Maybe you'll see Rebecca after all. It and was. They're very diligent. About yeah, they 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 respect theater. You know, they're like we're back in our seat like ten minutes before they half, took half their two poops before the musical started. That's true. <laughs> That's the European <laughs> way. Um, I guess we really have to talk about the most important song in the show. So important that it's sung twenty-seven times. Rebecca. <laughs> Wait, there was Rebecca. other songs in this show? Yeah. <laughs> I love this but song. I bet you, I bet you tonight when you lay your head down. I, I can't. I have on not your been able pillow, to stop. you will hear Rebecca. <laughs> I'm un- I'm oh, like, like she won't German surrender. <laughs> And and they've updated the lyrics more recently um, so that they are a little bit more direct. And strangely, Miss Danvers is the only one with a goal in the story. She's the only one with agency and a goal that she's trying to achieve here. So the that's cousin. what... Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> cousin does have a lot of agency. Yeah, too much if you ask me. Miss um, Danvers, I would have loved... So Karen Mason was supposed to play her on Broadway. Before that, in the readings, Carolee Carmelo played her in the readings. Oh. Oh. Women with like some boy says. So yes. to wrap your head around who you could, those women taking on that belt would have been like astounding. And also the character work that I'm sure they would have done. Um, but yeah, it's a good song, I think. It's, Again, it's, 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 a nice musical. it's very catchy and they know it. I mean, that's why it's everywhere. <laughs> It was their memory. Sure. I, I, it, it's a marketable song. You could hear it once and it's in the head, your head for the rest of the week. I am never going to be able to get that song out of my head now, whether it's because they play it 27 times or because it's a good song. You tell me, but Does, is there a difference? Is the real question? <laughs> Maybe that's the only reason why we all know music of the night is because they play it 500 times in Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Maybe or it's a good song. Her, when she sings it with um with I when she like I mean those two in her belting yes. it's fabulous. So that was definitely a good calling card. 
Yeah, I, I love this song. Like, I have no co- critiques about this song. Like, maybe if I heard it with English lyrics, I'd be like, oh, that's a little cringier. Well, I will say there's a version on YouTube that people should find of all of the Mrs. Danvers singing it in, like, Korean and, and German and all the different, not English, of course, but all the different versions. And it's really cool to hear, like, how it's all in different languages. Because, again, like, I, I'm, 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 I don't sit home and watch foreign musicals often <laughs> can't say it's something i do so it's, it is very interesting to see the different is it the the the, the music is beautiful this musical it is Talking about the music in this, sometimes it's easier to digest like melodies and things like that when it's not in English because yes. you don't have to listen for the lyrics at all. Um, and we like we had like subtitles and we were trying to read along and everything. But the music itself, like you, there's no moment where you're like groaning at a lyric or anything like that because you can't understand anything. <laughs> so well, that um, is, and oftentimes when American shows are brought o- brought overseas people are listening to it with subtitles They're, They don't necessarily translate the entire show. Mm-hmm. They like, are, isn't that the, the way it is with movies too? Yeah. Well, I think English is such a common language, especially yeah. in, in Europe that it's not, it's not profitable for them to re- really do all the translations. Yeah. Right. So you're, we kind of were doing the reverse, I guess, like watching, I guess, appreciating what it's like to listen to a musical not in your native tongue, but listening to it and having it translated and, and janky translation, um, which is why it's so important. I guess those producers, you really should spend money on people who know on good translations for your musicals and worth the money. Yeah, yeah, that's an entire audience you're missing out on. Um, let's talk about the one song where, you know, a man isn't telling a woman to smile. Um, let's talk about <laughs> Never Was a Smile That Cold. Da stand sie auf. Warf den Kopf zurück und sagte lächelnd. Was machst du, wenn ich ein Kind bekomme? Man wird denken, es wird deins. Auf jeden Fall ist es meins. Und einmal wird Mendele ihm gehören. Deine perfekte Gattin, Max, wird die perfekte Mutter sein. Und du spielst den Papa als der perfekte Nahe. Um, where a man really does not want a woman to smile at him. You don't smile, they tell you to smile, you do smile, they kill you. (laughs) (laughs) And she dies, and she still has a smile on her face, like, whoa. Uh, So I had to lock her in a boat and sink the boat. (laughs) What a way to go. And then, okay, okay. In every version of Rebecca, after hearing this, she's like, "So you do love me?" That's the only reaction she has. <laughs> you murdered her, but you love me. But you still love me. That means you still love Rebecca, and you love me. Oh my god. Well, again, oh. you know, Alfred Hitchcock was not the paragon of like women's oh. empowerment. So yeah, he's like, well, you know, that means she's gone, and 
you're the new Mrs. De Winter. Enough that you don't even really need a name, girl. Yeah, it's Mrs. De Winter. I mean, <laughs> she gets the song. Just I am Mrs. De Winter. So wait, right? in the am I in the move in the movie? Because it's been a while since I've seen the Hitchcock movie. Does she? She also doesn't have a name, or is she I? She's I, um, unnamed character. But also in that movie, he does not murder Rebecca. She right. ends up dying through the hijinks. <laughs> And then he doesn't tell Jesus anyone. Too. Those silly yeah. women. That's also another thing. A lot in the movie is like, silly, silly lady, silly girl. Don't you know? Silly, silly, silly little girl. Yeah, they did. They just did a new version of Rebecca with Lily James um, about a couple months ago. And in that and one, Army it Hammer. is. Yeah, yeah, that piece Again, of shit. Again, everybody surrounding this, it is a, it's, it's a cursed property. Everyone <laughs> surrounding this, um, this property is like creepy it's why i did a podcast about it rebecca she's everywhere she won't surrender yeah she won't um she is invincible um yeah she's Um, a ghost she's a ghost um i i hate this song but i also hate that i kind of like it that's my biggest concern with like my thought is that the song is fine yeah it's like another ballad in the sea of ballads oh oh, Um, the smile one the smile smile that cold Yes. And especially when I can't even understand the lyrics, like if I just heard the song, I'd probably be like, "Yeah, that's fine." But right. like when you know what's being said, it's like, "Wow!" So he's just confessing that he killed her. <laughs> I can imagine like Ramin Karimlu going to like sing this at a fifty-four below and being like, "And I'm over the cross, smile like old." And I'm like, "Wow, that's so beautiful." And then in context, like, "Oh no, oh my god." <laughs> I mean, Caramel would have done the shit out of this musical. But that was the one point where I was like, all right, Max. Okay, cool. Because, you know, like, he is sort of like, you know, he's really hot, which is a plus for me. Um, But he didn't, you know, he's got moments. But, again, he wasn't as, like, crazy as as Laurence Olivier. No. Right? So, I mean, but then that one song, I was like, he brought it. Okay, we get it. You don't want your wife to smile at you. You better not. (laughs) Not, um, not after, not I would after love... she fucked her cousin. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? My wife fucked her cousin and she's smiling at me too much. Gotta sink in a boat. Sorry. Those, them's the rules. Them's I don't have many rules. rules, but that's my one. Do you think he lied? Do you think he just drowned her? <laughs> like, well, wait. Think about what it would take to die that way. Because they were like, I'm saying like the hatch was open. So, but there were holes in it and there were, the hatch was open. So does that mean, like, how do you sink a boat that, like, remember the Titanic took forever to sink. Like, how long does it take a boat to sink? Enough for the woman to get, I mean, it was a lot. They said, was, they said the hatch was locked from like the inside and then there was holes drilled in from, from oh, the inside as well. Yeah. I, thought, so, I thought it meant like the, the, it took on water. Like he opened the things that. I think he oh, drilled that makes holes. More sense. He drilled that holes and then sense. he took her, put her down there, and then locked it. Uh, see, so why did he lock it mindset, if she's Andrew, dead? So... Why did he lock it if she was dead? Rebecca. <laughs> I think I think his side of the story here might be a little bit, little bit like, oh, I just pushed her and I don't know. She we died. We both reached I... for the gun. Yeah, we both suspect. reached for the yes. gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's okay. like maybe you put her in the boat and then you sank the boat and she drowned. <laughs> If this this musical has taught you anything, as long as you have the love of a man, that is what really matters. And if you're a man, as long as you have a ton of money, you won't go to prison. That also matters. And if you're white. Those are the two things. A lot of money, white. White, rich, and a man. That's all that matters. Never have to do anything. Army Hammer's still out free. (laughs) Oh, no. And I'm pretty sure he's eaten someone. On that note. Yeah, I was going to say... The, the one of the stars oh, of Rebecca was James Barber. So, oh god, oh that motherfucker! Who? Yeah, you can get away with a lot of shit. What did, what did this person do? Um, I'm not up. Um, we're gonna flash back all the way. You're gonna listen to my podcast, and you're yeah, gonna find Andrew. Out. Andrew, okay. episode yeah, five, you, you'll find out. Episode five of the what is it? Burnt. Burnt. Yeah. Um, I've told you about him before. Um, kids, look it up. <laughs> he, he's he's the reason why we haven't covered Jane Eyre yet. All I right. want to. I love crickets, that musical, anyone? but mm. uh, I like Jane Eyre. I, I wish he wasn't in it. Give me a new cast recording so I don't have to listen to his fucking voice. I could say with almost certainty you probably won't get another cast recording. Of the game. I was talking to know. Paul Gordon. He is apparently planning a streaming version of it along with like he did with Pride and Prejudice a few All right. years ago. I'm hoping. Just give me Maybe, something without James, James Barber. Barber. I was going to say, hopefully James won't be reprising <laughs> his role there. 
coming back to the role. It's James Barber, the one who originated it. And I'm like, no, why would you do this? <laughs> on that note, what is our overall thoughts on Rebecca and our cheese rating? Ooh, Blake, are you aware of our cheese ratings? No, tell me more. Ooh, I'll, I'll just make Andrew go first. And I think that'll be enough of an example. Great. Andrew, you're on first. All right. Um, so overall thoughts, uh, you know, it's a, German language musical, so I don't know if I can do anything commenting on like lyrical quality or anything. The, I mean, if you're looking for a feminist piece, you're you're not going to find it here. Um, and if you like ballads, you're probably going to really like this one. Fans of uh, Frank Wildhorn uh, embrace this show. Um, personally, I found it a little bit boring. The first half, I was like, eh, "This is okay," and then it kind of just keeps going, and the songs <laughs> don't really change. Um, and they play the same song over and over, even if it's good. I mean, it's, it gets to be a little bit much, um, but it does look very cool when they burn the place down at the end. So extra points for that. Um, I'm going to give it a, uh, you know, I looked up German cheeses and I'm realizing I can't pronounce <laughs> any of these. Uh, here's one. Uh, Romader, Romader cheese from uh, Bavaria, Germany. OK, well, we'll go with that because it's a German thing. OK. <laughs> All right, Blake, you want to head up? Are you ready? It can be literally um, any cheese you can justify. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm gonna. I again. This if I if I was Michael Quinn's and Sylvester LeVay sitting pretty on my hunk of cash from lots of musical success over in Europe and Asia. Um, I would give it like like a like a like a parmesan or a mozzarella, like like a very big staple cheese. But for an American, I'm going to give it like 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 a Costco version of Velveeta, like not even like the real slices, like a knockoff cheese. Oof. It wasn't for me. I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good one. But I uh, I kind of like the show, but mostly didn't like it. Like there is a part of me that's like, I really like the song Rebecca. That staircase, though, the projections, though, like... <clears throat> Maybe it's just because I felt fancy because I was watching something in a different language and I was like falling under its spell like a little bit. Cultural distancing right there. It, it feels more powerful because it's not in English. <laughs> Maybe um, uh, I just I didn't mind watching it, but I understand every critique you guys have said and agree 100 percent with every critique brought up here. It is completely accurate. So what I'm going to give this is a very fine, very nice uh, cheese plate. However, that cheese plate was made in 2006 and has been sitting underneath the bed and then you pull it out. And you know what? It was a cheese plate given to you at a specific hotel. This is called Magical Manderlay, and they give out cheese plates with your room. So it's a cheese plate from 2006 at Magical Manderlay. Good luck writing that one, Juliet. Is it, did you just make that long on purpose? Yes, I did. <laughs> this guy. This guy. Rude. It's, it's hard <laughs> to find. That's a lot of cheese. Yes. That's a lot a, of cheese, man. Well, it was once really nice, but it's gone beyond that now. Sure. We're, you don't see that. Doesn't cheese gets better when it ages. What? Not if it's left under your bed. Which oh, is yeah, it's Andrew not good under my bed. Cheese, I, I gotta go get some cheese. Hang on. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing at night, but <laughs> Blake, you were a wonderful guest. This was Thanks so much fun. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you for coming on. You've got a lot to promote, so promote it out for the world. Yes, please listen to if, again if you like creeps and you like twisty turny turny th uh, tales and you like musicals. Come over and list burnt on the Broadway yeah. Podcast Network. If they're here, they already like creeps. I mean, why else are they listening to us? <laughs> touche, touche. <laughs> it is great. I listened to all of it a long, uh, not a long time ago, a couple of weeks ago, because um, Alan sent me a little bit of a little extra sneak peek, so I got to see it before everyone else. It is a very in-depth analysis, very, very thorough and well executed. I was surprised at a lot of the interviews you got and uh, a lot of the the tensions being held. <laughs> um, it well, it was tense, but it wasn't. If, if you didn't live through that time, um, it was such. It's just such a bad shit crazy story so listen to it cannot recommend it more rebecca is so wacky and you know what? <laughs> i don't think it would have done well on broadway <laughs> I really don't. maybe that's, that's just so me. sad like after all this this guy was so obsessed with this musical and after all this i was like i don't know that this would have played a day but who's to say who's to yeah say? you know who's we'll definitely never know <laughs> 
<laughs> you know who's definitely not to say though? Our wonderful patrons. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> We're on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher at Musicals with Cheese. We're on Patreon at Musicals with Cheese. We're on Twitter at Cheesy Musicals. We're on Instagram, Musicals with Cheese. YouTube page, Musicals with Cheese. Patreon only podcast is Patreon with Cheese. Email us at musicaltheaterlives at gmail.com. Our title card is created by the amazing Jolene Casco. Go send her some love at Jolene Casco. Our keeper of the cheese is Juliet Antonio. This show is produced by the incredible, the wonderful, I miss you so much. Please come back to this show, Brianna Jones. And in case you haven't noticed, we've had some brand new theme songs playing throughout. Um, they were all created by Robin Nash of IOU Music UK. Go send her some love there. Thank you to the Broadway Podcast Network for having us on the platform and for not kicking us off for talking so much shit about rent. <laughs> um, Blake, do you have socials you want to promote? Sure. Follow burnt broadway on instagram and you can find me and if you like uh cute little kids because that's mostly what i uh instagram my kid my daughter um follow me at blake ross ny wonderful blake thank you so much for joining us andrew blake is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this on up um, thank you for having me you guys this was a dream come true and even though you hate rent <laughs> I'm still here for you. You are welcome on this show anytime, Blake. If there's a musical, you're like, oh, I got a really, I got an itching to talk about this. Just, just shoot us an email. We're an email away. You got it, guys. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys. We'll see you next time on Musicals with Chi. Right, sing the song. Ba-